all of you guys were going, hang on a second, he, he's fully rehabilitated, yeah. fully redeemed, back in the zone, we're seeing the best version of Anthony Joshua, it's a done deal. Now we're writing a different script. He went into a ring in front of 96,000 people and got battered. Daniel Dubois surely has to be fighter of the year. In the fights that he's had, he's been the underdog in all of them. Next question is gonna be, what's next for, for Joshua? And Retirement. Him? Well, look, listen, let, let's, I've always said, get in, get rich, get out. Sure. He's got in, he's got all the accolades you could want. Undisputed isn't going to happen. It's not going to happen. He doesn't get the respect that he deserves, from is who? what I'm saying. From the public. And you can't say that. Just look around. You've got listen 90 to, Listen to the people. Spencer. Listen to the people. me backwards. Welcome to episode 88 of Talk Boxing with Simon Jordan and Spencer Oliver. And today, one of the greatest, I think, around, Adi Oladipo. Wow, it's a nice big to see you, boys. Um, biggest fight week that we've had for a very long time. Let's dive straight into it. Let's get to well, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, before we do that, can we just wish you a happy birthday? Yes, thank this you. Is coming from me, yes, Adi, yes, and yes, all yes, of you, as obviously. Gifts, money, I'll take it uh, all. <laughs> maybe a bit of lunch, <laughs> Pizza Express or yeah, something right, like that. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> I've got better thing, things to hang about with you, you little weasel. <laughs> mm. Anyway, yeah, come on, let's get on with the show. What's the first reaction? What was the immediate reaction on the night? Do you want to go? Do you One of um, excitement. Mm. One of excitement first. Um, it's been a long week. You know, we'd sort of toured London, if you like. We did the old Billingsgate. We did Trafalgar Square, which, I, by the way, I didn't know you could rent. Or I didn't know Trafalgar Square was up for hire. Mm. Obviously, it was. Well, everything's up to be bought in this country these days, mate. Everything's up to be bought, right? <laughs> so, um, but ultimately, look, if Saturday doesn't deliver, all that means nothing. So sort of getting in there on Saturday and you have a look around and when it's full and they kind of lit it up, I think it was blue and red at various stages. I was like, wow, this is, mm. this is insane. The, the production was actually insane. All week, really, if we're, if we're honest. I think... Um, it green, wasn't it? Huh? It was, wasn't blue and red, it was predominantly green, wasn't it? Was, it? it was green yeah. for um, it for was green for a while. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was green, green for about a while. 30 seconds. But, but yeah, listen, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was sensational. I mean, you look at that, when you looked around, what is it, 98,000 they had in there? They said, yeah. Yeah, 98,000 people, mm -hmm. and it was just, yeah, you, um, the fight delivered, and the undercard delivered in many ways as well. Well, let I me mean, let's get into the fight. I mean, let's get into the, the, the actual mechanics of what we saw. Well, uh, you... Give me that I told you so moment, didn't you? Well, I kind of would like to, but I allowed myself to be bullied, cajoled and persuaded by the so-called boxing expert in the room. Experts. Yeah, that, all of us said that, it. That AJ was going to win. Yeah. And the only thing I was right about, if indeed I was right about anything, was that if AJ got hit, there was trouble. Mm. Um, and that this rede redemption and this rehabilitation that had been forecast and prophesized and suggested and that Ben Davidson was the oracle would come unstuck potentially if someone got involved with him. But you was in the camp of AJ winning inside six rounds like yeah, the rest of us, so. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah I mean, that's my point. So yeah. I, it's very difficult for me to sit and go, I told you so. <laughs> the only thing I told you and so. You actually though, actually dropped me a phone call the yeah, next morning yeah. going, so, I, I told, told you, you so. so. <laughs> yeah, I did about the fact that the, Anthony hadn't been hit. Yeah. And the thing for me was that there was danger when he did. The only, the only response to that was is that he didn't fold. He went out on his shield. But the fact of the matter is, is that it showed frailties in him. But then again, if you get yourself hit the way uh, you know, Daniel Dubois hit him, I think most heavyweights would have gone down. But you guys, you, you can't deny, yes, he got caught in that first round. He went down heavily there. And he never really recovered from that, but he showed a lot of balls in that, in that fight. He showed a lot of heart. And you've got to give him yeah, credit for that. Absolutely. You know, you've got to give him no, credit for that. No one can that. make any claims about that. But let's, let's pair it back from who was right and who was wrong. Yeah. And look at the, the whole structure of the fight from the ring walks. And a lot was being made. I, I thought wrongly, and I don't know what you thought, Addy, that potentially Daniel Dubois was going to freeze. Mm. And I didn't think that was going to happen in the slightest. Yeah. But did, when you saw the ring walks, they were different. They had Very. different feels to them. Yeah. So what did you take away from the initial reaction of Dubois going in and then Anthony coming in? D Dubois' ring walk was menacing. Yeah. Obviously, he was wearing like a robe, like almost throwback to... Tyson S. Yeah. 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 And I had Tony Bellew next to me. And I kind of hit Tony Bellew on his leg. I was like, look, Dubois is fully locked in here. Mm. Like this 98,000 thing hasn't phased him whatsoever, right? There's been talk about him not being a proper champion. Um, could he handle it mentally? And I saw a guy come into the ring that was almost like a dog that wanted to be let off the leash. Mm -hmm. Like, just let me fight. Yeah. Forget all the nonsense, forget the press conference and the 101 questions I don't want to answer. I just want to fight. I saw AJ come into the ring and I saw nerves. Mm. He stumbled as he came out of the walkway. It was ever so slightly, but I saw a stumble and I know knowing him mentally, that's put him mm. off already. Yeah. 
And then the walk to the ring, when he went onto that platform, usually AJ kind of does a sort of a look around and he kind of, you know, gives a almost a salute to the crowd. Like, I'm going to hear and I'm going to do it. Didn't see any of that. He yeah. wanted to get out of that AJ sort of pyrotechnic thing as quick as possible and make that ring walk. And then I looked at him in the ring and I was as close to ringside as you can get. And I just, I just knew there was a problem there. Mm. I, I, I don't know why I knew that. And I think I heard Don Charles say something similar when, when he was on with you guys yesterday. But I looked at him and I thought, okay, <clears> we have a problem. I looked at Dubois and looked at someone that just wants to fight and I looked at AJ and he looked a bag of nerves. And the complete opposite was supposed to happen. It happened. was the polar opposite. That's what I'm saying. In the build-up, we were all talking about... Was it going to be Daniel Dubois? How would he react when he sees 98,000 people there and they were all predominantly AJ fans anyway? And it was a polar opposite. I think that with Daniel Dubois, you looked at him and it was like the Terminator walking in. You looked at him and he was shouting, he was focused. Mm -hmm. and you go, he's there, he's ready. And AJ was very relaxed, walked in, very cool. Did you think he I don't think relaxed? anyone I, expected I, the fight to unfold the way it did. I thought he looked like a man walking towards the gallows. I looked at him when he came in because you, you try and read into these things and all mm. of us become you know, miniature psychoanalysts, don't we, in, in those moments. And you looked at Dubois and exactly what Addy said, which was ready to go. Yeah. All business, yeah. not phased, in the zone, barking at the camera, motivating himself. Anthony walked in, looked like a man walking towards the gallows, looked like he got the world on his shoulders, looked like something had changed from Friday evening mm. weigh-in yeah. to walking into that arena. I, I don't know whether it's the expectation that Anthony gets put upon him. I remember seeing it and saying to one of his entourage a while ago, about the 0-2 when he came back against Franklin, seeing mm -hmm. the level go up. When he walks in the room, the level goes up, the expectation goes up. And whether that hit him between the eyes or whether it was stumbling over his own two feet. And then going into the ring, Dubois pacing, building himself into a, into a motivated mo mindset. Anthony's standing in the corner, absolutely statue still. Yeah. And I look at that and I think to myself, what is that about? Yeah. Where's that coming from? Mm -hmm. it, it, does it smack in any shape or form? of his entrance in America for, for the Ruiz fight? Was there any similarities there? Although I saw he was more relaxed in the Ruiz fight. He was laughing and sort of smiling on the way into the ring. Did you get any comparisons there? Because it was a big launch of him in America. I then, think the concern, the concern for me was the slow walk that AJ had into the ring. We're outside. It's a long walk as well at Wembley. And Daniel Dubois come out. He was sweating. He was pumped. He'd worked out. And that's exactly how you have to be, especially heavyweight boxing. We knew what Daniel Dubois was going to do. We knew that he was going to come flying out, take the fight straight to Anthony Joshua. So why does Joshua then come in and looks cold? There was no sweat there. Mm. He was very relaxed. The ring walk was very slow. No, you're right in what you say, Simon. No movement in the ring. and just didn't look quite focused. Don't understand that myself, if I'm totally honest. There's I think a few that, that things as the well. preparation was maybe not right there. I think they misjudged no, no, no. that whole situation. I, I, I want to agree with you because I want to try and find an excuse for AJ, but... AJ doesn't misstep with preparation. Yeah. No, I, I, AJ, everything Well, it was is, miscalculated, Everything for sure. is perfect. Everything is get up at this time, sleep at that time, run at that time. Everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there was, the, again, there was the misstep in the ring walk. But then there was when there was in the ring. I don't know if you guys saw this. Again, small things, but mm -hmm. I look at... And maybe I overanalyze AJ. He was going to take his robe off. Yeah, so He that, took it and off then, and yeah, then he put, put it back, back on, on again. But he couldn't get it off, could he? Yeah, and then he yeah. took it. And I was like, yeah. well, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little things. The yeah, but that, that, that was... It wasn't a fact that uh, a case of that he couldn't get it off. I think he just changed his mind he and put it back mind. on. And, and, yes. And it, uh, that is a very strange thing to do because when you take your robe off, it's now time. It's We're now ready. Time. Yeah, I thought right, be, and he's I gone there and he's like, no, I'm not ready. And he puts it back on. But them small things that make a big difference in the performance. Everything is in the detail. There's small margins. But what about the observation that he got there at 9 o'clock in the evening um, in terms of arriving at the arena. Well... Because that the, that's the perceived wisdom, is that he arrived there at 9. Yeah. Now, that can't be the preparation that one would expect to be in the ring in... doing a ring walk in 50 minutes. Yeah. You're, you're coming into the arena, getting yourself acclimatised to where you're going to be and getting yourself into the right frame of mind to, go, arrived, go, to go through the routine. Did he arrive at 9? He arrived... Every, yeah, he arrived at 9. What's he arrived happened? everywhere throughout fight week late. Yeah, but to go Everywhere through yeah, when you, on fight night to go through the routine of getting there, soaking up the atmosphere, building up. That's half an hour gone already. Yeah, you go out, you have a look, you go right. This is what I'm going into. Mindset, all of that stuff. The preparation time is not enough. Going from 9 p.m. Now I heard the excuse was that there was traffic or something, and so he arrived at 9 p.m. Well, that you know when you're going into a fight of that magnitude with a you know with a crowd like that. It's not pro right preparation. You can't you can't get yourself ready and tuned and, and, and focused 
in that in that and, and time Spence, scale. To add on to it, like I said, everything was late throughout fight week. Yeah, I'll and see, I know yeah. people might say they're small things, but again, it's all in the detail. Mm. Um, press conference, sorry, uh, the grand arrivals, Leicester Square, late. Mm. The excuse was yeah. traffic. The way, sorry, the press conference uh, where Daniel Dubois was pacing up and down for ages, having been there for three hours, we kind of had to delay it for half an hour because AJ was late again. Mm. Use the thing of traffic. I'm like. Are you focused or not yeah, focused? Yeah, I mean, some yeah. of that you can understand, though, can't you? Because ultimately, he's going, I'm the A-side, you wait. Yeah. You wait. And, and you will wait till I get in a room. Mm. And I'll get there, and you'll know where your place is. Yes. But, when, but that's different to being prepared to go into the ring. Mm. When you're late to a press conference and you're blowing off your opponent by saying, you know, wait, the thing starts when I get there. But the fight starts at 10 o'clock. Yeah. And everyone knows that, and yeah. you ain't making no one wait for that, mm. least of all the Saudis. So the bottom line is, is that Anthony's preparation and the preparation around him didn't seem right and doesn't seem right in retrospect. And, and, and again, we're focusing a lot on AJ and we will do for a period of time, but we're going to get into Daniel Dubois because he's the guy that won the fight. But when you look when you look at the first round and you look at the that Daniel's approach to it, I mean, he starts the fight brilliantly, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, how impressed were you? How surprised? I mean, I, I'm not, I wasn't surprised that Daniel started fast. No. It would appear that everybody in the arena expected that. him to start yeah. fast, except Anthony and his corner. Well, we done a, uh, a tactics piece, myself and Shane McGuigan, and, and we talked a lot about who establishes that jab first, who takes control of the centre of the ring, and it was all about... Daniel Dubois come out very, very fast, but he got off with a jab and he started landing the jab, and he was landing it crisp crisply, and I'm looking at it and going, AJ, from the opening bell, was doing all the basics wrong, all the fundamentals that you're taught. Like, you, you get hit with a jab, your head goes back, you get hit with another jab, then... You've only got to come off the line two inches either way, knowing that that jab is like now who's controlling the fight. And that was the problem right from the opening bell that Daniel took centre of the ring. He got off with a jab first. AJ went on the back foot. And we expected that in some ways. And we thought, right, let him come on and do that. But as, as he was going back the 30 seconds before the bell went, when he got caught with that right hand, he's gone back in a straight line. And actually, we talked in the tactics piece as well about... Daniel Dubois being a little bit weak on the left side when he when he attacks, comes in with a left hand down low. Actually, AJ was doing that, and that's how he got caught. The right hand come from, like, you could see it at the back of the room. AJ's gone back in the straight line with his hand down by his waist. Like, tactically, he got it all wrong. It's bad. He yeah. got it all wrong because he knows that Daniel... The, the, like, the only chance that Daniel Dubois had was by starting fast, mm -hmm. putting on AJ and catching him. And we thought that, listen, that's the chance he's got. But realistically, AJ's boxing IQ may be a little bit too experienced and he would work that out. Do you, he fell into the trap. Do you ever worry, insofar as you're worried, Addy, for, for Anthony, that he doesn't really know what he is in terms of falling in between a variety of different styles, listening to different voices, finding mm. different ways to overcome the challenges that he's had in life and then falling into a situation where he doesn't know what to do, when to do it. Because I'm looking at him and thinking, we've listened to this reinvigoration of him over the last 12 months. We've listened to the fact that Ben Davison is the wizard that's turned him into this rebuilt, mm. revitalised, re-energised Anthony Joshua. But sometimes, I mean, I heard a story that he's asking people at the beginning of the week, does Daniel Dubois really hit as hard as people say he does? Mm. And those sort of conversations going. And I've heard stories before about him being ready to fight and then walking into a room and asking another trainer of another fighter, how would you fight the fight I'm about to fight? Yeah, that was against Alexander Usyk. That was against Alexander Usyk, mm -hmm. so you know the trainer I'm talking about yeah. and who he was, uh, who was, who he was um, um, uh, doing the lovers on. Um, do, you, do you think that there's a, a danger that Anthony doesn't quite know what he is, so then finds the, the desire to be that vacuum be filled by other people saying, you're this, you do that, you're this, you do that, rather than him knowing, this is what I am, I know what I am, I know what I'm capable of doing, yeah. and this is what I'm going to do, and living and dying by that. Yeah, he's an overthinker. Yeah. He, he's, he wants he, to take yeah. up too much he, information. He's, he's an overthinker he that wants to soak up information from various yeah. trainers, and he spoke about this when he left Rob McCracken about searching for various bits of knowledge from different trainers as opposed to staying with one. Hence why in the last couple of years we've seen three different trainers, Robert Garcia... We've seen, obviously, the team with Ben Davison now and Derek James Derek in America. James, yeah, yeah. So he's tried to pick pieces from everyone. Um, wh when I spoke to him in the lead-up to this fight, he was speaking about being a gladiator and going into battle. Yeah. Um, and I was like, OK, we're, we're, mm -hmm. hopefully we see that. Yeah. And all, all I saw was someone being bullied. And I've never... Say we want about AJ technically as a boxer. I know you're speaking from a technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. AJ's always been the bigger, the stronger guy that will bully you. Well, that so was, when that's Daniel always, that's was kind of bullying his, him yeah. and putting his elbow in his face and, and the head, and I'm like, OK, 
bully him back. I mean, forget boxing ability mm -hmm. for a second, because Daniel's been doing this since he was seven. AJ started at 18. Just use your strength and bully him back. You're allowing yourself to get bullied. So, so I was, I, I was, I was stunned. I'm not going to play Monday morning quarterback here and pretend mm -hmm. that I knew exactly. I was stunned with what I was seeing. I couldn't believe he was how getting, this was he was out. getting bullied. Like you say, yeah. AJ's always been that fighter that when he's explosive and he's the bully. That's 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 his main assets. Yeah. That's where that's his big advantages. If he goes into that technical mode and trying to work behind the jab and and you know trying to be technical, that's not his game. These fighters' his game are, is yeah, they are what they are. Yeah. Malik Scott's another one, and it's funny because Malik Scott was on with you guys. Yeah, and yeah. He was speaking all technical with you guys, and he's trying to change John T. Ward into a technical fighter. Yeah. John T. Ward is just a brawler. Yeah. Let him brawl. AJ's always been a bit of a, a bully. Just let him be a bully. Mm -hmm. And now I was watching AJ trying to be a counter puncher. You said that. You know, you expected him to be on the back foot. I didn't. Who, AJ? Yeah, I, expe no, I, I expected, expected him to that. hold his ground and let Daniel come to Let's him. Let's have a fight. And counter. From like, the AJ's good at second, stepping back and throwing the shots and whatever. From the very first second, he AJ went on was bike. on the back foot. Yeah. I'm like... Why are you on the well, back didn't, foot? Here? Didn't you think he was? Did you not think he was going to do that for the first couple of rounds? Yeah, no, I just, thought he keep at range. I didn't think he would let run. Daniel Dubois come charging across the ring and, yeah. and keep him at range. Yeah, but I didn't think he would run as much as he would because he allowed Daniel to get up too much momentum, and that was the problem. It was more about holding your ground, and saying like, "Listen, I'm I'm the guy here." Because whoever gets that centre of the ring and yeah. you're holding it there, it's a, it's a yeah. psychological battle going sure. on as well. And AJ, as soon as he felt that first jab, he went, back. He went on his bike, went back. and that was probably the worst thing he could have done because that fed Daniel. And Daniel started getting the momentum. Daniel's one of those guys. He's like, he's, he is very like, he's like the Terminator, where he just pushes forward. There's no real thought process in what unless he's doing. Unless you dent him. He's very aggressive yeah. in his approach, unless you give him a little something to feel, feel yeah. there. You've got to, you've got to are, let them feel the presence. Are, these are pretty basic mistakes now, aren't they? These are pretty fundamental differences between what you'd expect an elite heavyweight that's conditioned to be in this environment and everyone had said was going to deal with this Daniel Dubois mm. and everyone was tipping to deal so and being on the back of Ben Davidson's excellence. These are pretty fundamental there's, there's, basics. Sorry, sorry. There's, yeah. there's an elite heavyweight that's been doing these things against unelite fighters in Hellenius, Ottavolin and Nganu, and there's an elite heavyweight that's now having to do it oh, hold on. against an elite heavyweight. Yeah. So hold on and a second, but no one was writing that particular script before the fight because the only person with respect that was suggesting that the fights that he had had were... Wallin was made for him because of the sparring they had before, so he knew he could beat him up. Hellenius didn't come to fight. Mm. Jermaine Franklin was whatever he was, and Nganu was there to be beaten. That narrative was only being trotted out by me. All of you guys were going... Hang on a second. He, he's fully rehabilitated, yeah. fully redeemed, back in the zone. We're seeing the best version of Anthony Joshua. It's a done deal. Now we're writing a different script. Now we're saying that he was now in with an elite heavyweight, and ultimately he can't mm. do the things that he did in the last four fights against elite heavyweightweight. Sometimes, you sometimes we can only. No, sometimes, sometimes we can only. Sometimes, sometimes we can only review the film when the film is over. I've got no. I've got. I've got to say this, mate. When we done the show the week before the show, I said. What's your what, what's your thoughts on it? What's your opinion? You went, well, I'll give you the opinion after the fight. You can't... And now you're going, well, my opinion was right. What I, went, I said was, I actually recall was, I'm not sure that... Dan I'm sure someone can, but I'm not sure Daniel can execute. I think Anthony Joshua is going to get beaten. I'm just not sure it's going to be by Daniel mm. Dubois. Yeah. But, but it depends upon what version of Daniel Dubois turns up and what the version of Anthony Joshua turns up. And the version of Anthony Joshua turned up is the version that I have led myself to believe would turn up. And you guys and all your little bots and orthodoxy convinced me. And fair well, place, you. Listen. My weakness for going. <laughs> actually, yeah, you're probably right. It'll be Joshua. Now, do you know what though? I don't think anyone expected it, Simon. I mean, the way that that fight unfolded. You had, the same, feeling, as, you had huh? the same feeling as me. I text you on Saturday morning. I, I, I totally, I, no, I, I totally to you, agree. There's something in the air here. Yeah. So yeah. many people are writing off Dubois. Mm. So many yeah. people are giving him no chance. I would not be surprised. We, we had, had that conversation. That conversation. We did, yeah. and you say, listen. Daniel Dubois, you know what he'll do. He'll roll the dice, you know, the chaos creates opportunity. Whether he can get himself in that position for that opportunity is a different matter. But we knew that he, he had the potential. It, we said, I, didn't we, it was not a complete surprise what happened that turned over. We're going to get on to rolling on the dice in a minute because it's a quote that's being used somewhere else and we're going to analyse that. But are you surprised? I mean, there's a kind of school of thought that suggests that it might have been better for Anthony Joshua to get cleaned out in the first round, be able to turn around and say someone, it was a punch from the gods. Are you surprised that he got up in the first round? Not surprised because I know his makeup and like I, I know how much he'd want it, he'd want it. The powers of recovery for AJ were very slow, and that was the yeah. problem. He gets up and he's still all over all over the place with his legs. But it, the heart that the kid shows, you can't deny that. You go, you're looking at that and going, wow. Like how is he getting through these rounds? Round one, he's over. Round two, he's over. Round three, he's gone. Like what I'm saying is, you're looking at that and going. 
Where is he finding it from? Credit where credit's due there. So I was not surprised that he is got he, up. He's got the fighter's mentality. Is he Addy one of those that when he gets hit, he stays hit? Yeah. Yeah. Very much, not not as bad as Amir Khan, but very yeah. much in that kind of mould. When he gets hit, he stays hit. And that's, that's not a, seen it now. That's not a new thing, by the way. Like when he got knocked down in the seventh round against Kalichko, it took him till the tenth round to recover. But Kalichko never done anything. And then when he recovers, he's like, right, no, no, I'm he's, back. He's, he's, it's he's, a, it, the, no, no, the recovery seven, process. He's seven years maybe. younger, Spence. He's seven years younger, so the powers of recovery are a lot better. As good as AJ is and as fit as he looks, and I know AJ is, you know, probably one of the best athletes we've ever seen. He's 35 in October. Yeah, sure. The, the recovery powers just aren't the same. It's a young man's game. And up against him was someone that was his age when he beat Klitschko. Yeah. Mm. A 26, 27-year-old that's full of beans. Was the live one that Joe Gallagher forecast. Joe Gallagher said this is the first time he's been in yeah. with a live one. And there's going to be a challenge as a result of it. When you... Um, when you look at the fifth round and we move, let's go back to the fourth round we, you know, in terms of a particular piece of um, uh, um, dialogue that we've been privy to now, which was the rolling of the dice mm. mentality that I referred yeah. to a moment ago, which was the corner um, being led by one of the corner men, then being supported by Ben Davidson about rolling the dice. Yeah. And then you've got this overlay where, where, where Shane McGuigan is commenting on the fight yeah. and saying... Uh, hang on a second, that's very dangerous advice. He's going to leave himself open and susceptible to a short right hand. And 45 seconds later, yeah. that's precisely Shane, what you've got. Shane was spot on with that analysis because you look at that and you go, roll the dice. He's still trying to get himself back together. Yeah. One little clip when you're like that as a boxer, one little clip you go back to that situation where you're totally gone again. So it's all about rebuilding. So you've got to be, you've got to be smart. It's got to be, it's got to be educational in what you're doing. You, you don't roll the dice in them situations. AJ lands that right hand. And like, where, like, where did that come from to throw a lead uppercut whilst you've got a guy in the corner, is like, like, that's like Russian roulette because you leave yourself wide open on that side and Daniel's only got to put a tiny little shot out and it's lights out. I think that, yeah, rolling the dice situation, that was, that's terrible advice. Yeah, it's bad. It's terrible bad. advice. It's, it's bad corner advice. It's the kind of corner advice you get when you, you've been knocked down six or seven times and this is now round 11. Yeah. And you somehow got to you round You roll 11. the dice in round 11, maybe 12. Round, maybe, yeah. maybe roll the dice then. To, to do it when you've had that disaster of a round four, it should just be very basic of just, let's just hang on, hold. You're, real, you you're you rebuilding. Hold, you think yeah. back underneath you. Do, were you surprised at the lack of intensity in the corner? I mean, a calm corner is a good corner, right? But you want to see... Uh, during the fight, you're watching Anthony, and with due respect to the terminology, Anthony was getting battered around the ring. Mm, yeah. You know, in the fifth... He, he hurt Dubois in the fourth, and he got Dubois going in the fifth, but prior to that, he's getting battered from pillar to post. Yet there doesn't seem to be any intensity, no any urgency... urgency any kind of sentiment of you don't want to you don't want to communicate crisis to someone, but you want to get people no, no, no. No, sometimes, awake. You know, sometimes you got to. Sometimes yeah, you got to. Right. I mean, Emmanuel Stewart did it so many times with Vladimir Klitschko. Mm, yeah. Famously, we've seen Nazim Richardson, the great late Nazim Richardson, used to do it as well. It was a crisis, and sometimes you've got to make it be a crisis. No, so, yeah. so, so the fighters have got to understand it as well. Because AJ was going back to that corner and it was like, "You're all right. I am all right." AJ said, "I'm like, you're not all right. Mm. You're not all right. You're getting bashed up, and someone's got to explain it to him." Like, just cover up. Someone's got to scream. Ben Davison's sort of level never goes up or down. It's, yeah. it's kind of the same, isn't it, all the time? There's, there, but there's a time for a level change there. Uh, one million percent. your boy's getting beaten up and you need to say something. There's time, like, when a box is in a corner and there's a, there's a sense of urgency or there's a sense of urgency needed in the fighter, if he's having a minor crisis or whatever, there's a time to be calm and there's a time to pick it up and give him a bollocking. And the timings were all wrong in that corner. Like you say, Simon, when you go like one tone through the fight, the fighter himself, he doesn't react to that. Yeah. Like if my trainer was saying to me, if a fight was close and we were in the 10th round, 11th round, he'd say to me, you want to lose this fight? Because you're yeah. losing the fight. You know, pick it yeah, up, you need, you let's that, go. You need a the gear change. That, yeah. yeah, but that, that hits a switch in the brain. You need a gear change. If you bollock someone all the time, they become anaesthetised to it. So you've got to be able to have the switch gear yeah. and be able to switch up in any walk of life, whether it's business, football, fo boxing or whatever it yeah. is, be able to concentrate mm. someone's minds. Does it, do we do we take any? I mean, I looked at that. I've not. I'm sorry. You know, I've got. I think that Ben Davison was getting a hell of a lot of credit and a hell of a lot of accolades, and there's there's a perception that Ben Davison is in the Ben Davison business, and obviously Anthony Joshua was being very complimentary and refers to everything now as we, no longer I. We. Mm. I don't know what you take from that. Whether that's mm -hmm. meaningful. I think sometimes you've got to be I. I want to do this. Yeah. I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm disappointed. Not we're disappointed. Mm. We'll come back mm -hmm. because ultimately it's going to yeah, have to be him, isn't it? Of course. Do we think? Do we think that we take anything away, given the fact that he that Ben Davison has been built up to this level? Would they attribute a lot of the 
rehabilitation of Fury in the first place to Ben Davison. We have seen the, the perceived rehabilitation of Anthony Joshua yeah. climaxing in this disappointment on Saturday night. Is there a big diminishing of Ben Davidson's reputation now as a back of this? Not diminishing of it. I think he just got it totally wrong. And, 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 that, and that's, that is the reality of it. I think that the game plan was all wrong. I think that the way that they dealt with the situation in the corner in between rounds was all wrong. Um, and yeah, so it was, it was a mis misjudgment. And that's where I see it. You know, I can't, I can't judge him as a trainer on that one thing because you build a fight. You, no, but you build a trainer up and then you knock a trainer down. But I say that fight in particular... Oh, I mean, that's the truth. If you're going to get it wrong, the last place you get it wrong is the biggest Absolutely. fight. Absolutely. Third time. Totally agree. World title in front of 96,000. This is the moment when you and, get and it right. And Simon, you're, you're only remembered for your last performance, whether you're a boxer totally. or a trainer, and that's where we're at with it. We're talking, talking about trainers. Did you want to say something? No, I was going to say, look, you separate the very best in, in any sport when pressure hits you. Totally. Whether it be the, the managers mm -hmm. um, on the touchline when you need to make that change, or, or a trainer when you just need that, that one bit of instruction to really separate yourself sure. from the elite. And look, Ben's, Ben's an upcoming trainer and he's a very good trainer, but ultimately he messed up on Saturday. He messed mm. up. But, but you can also make an argument saying you can only be as good as your fighter. And AJ messed up as well. Yeah. They both messed up and yeah. ultimately... We're talking you know, about trainers that clearly didn't mess up um, is Don Charles. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a lot of credit and a lot of criticism, both equal measures when people do well and do badly. And I think sometimes it's too much, too much praise and too much criticism, never yeah. in the middle. And it should be more balanced. But Don is responsible for presiding over a period from um, Daniel Dubois taking on Usyk. And, you know, you've seen that Daniel rebuild after the Joe Joyce. You've seen him beat Trevor Bryan. You've seen him beat Kevin Lorena. There wasn't... People weren't hugely impressed in those fights. Yeah. Trevor Bryan, with due respect, is not a huge name. Lorena, he made hard work of for a variety of different reasons. Mm -hmm. The Usyk fight was full of controversy because Don maintains that that was a fight that they could have won and should have won and was stolen away from them. Yeah. Then you've seen... Don, we build him for the for the for the Gerald Miller fight, then the Hergovich fight, which really cements it. Yeah. So when you look at the work that Don Charles has done with Daniel to get the belief into him, do you see fundamental changes in Daniel besides the belief? Do you see a better fighter? Do you give all or a significant proportion of the credit to Don and look at the work that he's done and go, that's on you, pal? Absolutely. 100 percent You know, I see them, you know, I see Don working with him in the gym. I know Don for a long time and I've seen him build as a trainer. You know, he's a student of the game and he's worked and he's learned and he's, he's learned his craft. And I think what he's done with Daniel Dubois is, which he said himself, it's not about the physicalities. I don't work on that so much with Daniel because he's an athlete. He's explosive. He's going to do that. I work on the psychological side of him, making him believe in himself. That Alexander Usyk fight, which was the moulding of him, Don had been with him a couple of months before that. So he hadn't really had the time there. And he feels that maybe, let's see if we get that opportunity again. But if you look at the, the, the 14 months that they've had together since then, and the victories that they've turned around. I mean, Daniel Dubois surely has to be fighter of the year in the fights that he's had. He's been the underdog in all of them. He's come through them with flying colours. And that last performance was sensational. Tactically, he got it spot on. He went out there. You know, you look at right from the ring walk and you just go, what a performance. Don Charles has a big part to play in that. I salute him for that. And I think that, you know, Agreed. credit to him. I think, he's, you know, I yeah. think he's done a great job. Yeah, I think Don's fantastic. And Don invited me to his gym many moons ago when Daniel Dubois was only an 18-year-old and I was lucky enough to see uh, Daniel Dubois spar Derek Chisora and I've kept in close contact with Don since then and he doesn't get enough credit, right? I mean, his only real big charge was Derek Chisora um, and then since then he's kind of been sort of, you know, working with other yeah. fighters but none of them have got to that level but he's, he's almost like another father figure yeah. for uh, Daniel Dubois. Um, so you're right, you don't necessarily, necessarily need to work on what Daniel Dubois has got here, it's here. Yeah, absolutely. And Don's worked on that meticulously. Yeah. Don recognised it, which is a, that's a quality in a trainer on, on its own because with trainers, but a lot he's of trainers, not the credit. No, but a lot he's of trainers not, got it's big egos. It's they go, though, isn't it? I want to put my impact in this. I want to change you here. Do this. I don't want you doing that. Don said, "Listen, it's not about that. It's all here. It's all here." And like for a trainer to recognise that makes him a good trainer. You know what I'm saying? And so Don, yeah, Don's. But it's also interesting. Ernie stripes. Was, was it the Helgovich fight or was it the Baby Miller fight where Frank Warren? called for Daniel's father. That was the Miller, the Miller fight, fight yeah. yeah. That was the Miller fight. Yeah. So what does that tell you? I that mean, his father plays a big big role in it. And Don, Don talks about that anyway. He said, look, he's not going to try there, and separate that. Is there a problem that. there? He's not going to change is there, that. Is there a conflict there? It's not, like what I did see in that fight, when, it's always when been AJ away. got put down, it, it might have been round one or two, when AJ got put down, Don, sorry, uh, uh, Daniel Dubois' father was on the apron yeah, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 
and Daniel Dubois was looking at his father for instructions. Because Dan, that, but, that, but that's the way it's always been with Daniel, right? So they can't break that. They can't change it. So they just accept it and, and mould it into what they're doing. Because Daniel's always going to revert back to his dad. What do you think? Was that good? His dad's a big influence in what he does. You know, and a fighter with a fighter, he's got to believe in his team. It's important. Really important. He believes in Don. His dad's always going to be a part of that, whether people like it, whether they think but, it's right but, or wrong. But he's now become a bigger part because he yeah. was never... No, he was never normally in the corner. No. Nah. He's now a licensed member in the corner, which is different from him just being because of, a father that's on the outside yeah. screaming. He's now part of the corner. And so who is the number one voice in that corner? Is it Don or is it the father? But, I mean, so I far, so good. Yeah, this is that, that's what I'm saying. If, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm. And I think that's the situation you have. It's very unique. This situation is very unique. It probably You probably won't even see it again. But it is what it is. His dad has played that role since Daniel was a seven-year-old kid. You know, he's always boxed. He's always trained. He was homeschooled. Yeah. Boxing was his life. And his dad was a big part of that. So he's always going to have an influence. And, and if that's what makes Daniel Well, tick, that's what he was built for, wasn't if it? If that's what Daniel makes Daniel his whole tick, life has been, so His whole bit. life has been curated around that. Absolutely. I mean, the, the next big question, because time waits for no man, does it? The next question is going to be, what's next for, for Joshua? And, Retirement. And, well, retirement. look, listen, let's, let's, let's no, have a listen. No, I disagree. I totally retirement. disagree with retirement. that. Retirement. Well, listen, I was, I was going to say what's next for both fighters, but let's have a listen to what Anthony Joshua said on his Instagram. Uh, yes, yeah, so now we came up short, but look, we've got to look at all the positives. That's the mindset and that's the perspective that we have to have, a positive one, always. Look at what we've achieved in the space of 11 years. It's phenomenal. And I want to thank every single one of you that's been riding with me. What a roller coaster journey. But you know what the problem is? Is that it's far from over yet. You know, we've done it once, we've done it twice. Doing it, for, doing it a third time hasn't been easy, but I believe it's something I can achieve. It's about making the right steps forward, working hard, improving, and it's got to come from here more than anything. It can't come from any external voices or influences. It's got to come from here. And it's only been a day, but when I sit back and I'm thinking, I know I've got a lot of this, man. I know I've got a lot of this. So, yeah, just a video to say thanks for your support. Thanks for being on this roller coaster journey with me. Keep your seatbelts tight because deep, deep, deep down in here, I know we've got a lot more to bring, a lot more to bring to the game. And long may it continue. British Boxing, I appreciate you. We rise up together. Let's go. What's that about him? I mean, he wanted to, he wanted to record that video or something like that and played itself into dressing room before the fight. Yeah, yeah. Rather than that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, listen, I know, 24 I mean, hours after the fight, I found, I found that quite unusual. To be fair, that, but that he was as upbeat as he was. He, he's not retiring. He's not. He's not. He's got well, no we'll get, idea. Of, well, we'll he's get got, to that in a second. Yeah. But you're in this fabled WhatsApp group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it'll be buzzing now, won't it? People telling you this, that, and the other. Heart of a lion, so, mate. So what's gone on in there then? This fabled yeah. WhatsApp. Yeah. No. No. Just just support. That's what they do. He's like, he's a, it's a Finchie ABC group and the kids there, he's always been very close to them. He still trains there on a regular basis. And they're, sent, yeah, yeah, they're, they're showing great. support. Fantastic. But what's he saying? But he's saying he's not retiring. You know, it happens. It's heavyweight boxing. He got caught. He got it wrong. He said that he, he said that he got it wrong. He said, like, it was amateur hour at some points of the fight, but he will try and come back again. He said it's becoming harder now to try and become a three-time world heavyweight champion, but it's not over yet. You, your immediate reaction before we went to the VT was, <clears throat> retired. Yeah. Why are you taking that course of I, 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 I thought, what's the one? What's the one? He, he just you, lost a British you just fighter, Olympic, a you, legacy yeah, fight. you just lost. You, so you're Olympic gold medalist, world championship silver medalist. You've become unified champion of the world twice. You've been a pay-per-view star for the last seven years. He's got hundreds of millions in the bank. He's, yep. he's aligned to some of the biggest brands that this boxing's ever seen. We didn't have these brands before. Under that's Armour. money. That's yeah. money. So yeah. you're OK. So you've, once you've... I've always said, get in, get rich, get out. Sure. He's got in, he's got all the accolades you could want. Undisputed isn't going to happen. It's not going to happen. So you've already become a world champion. That's fine. British champion, European champion, Commonwealth champion. You've made a bucket load of money. You've changed but, the sport but but how can, the better. How can, you know him very well. Yeah. And I know people around him that know him very well, are very close to him. There is, a, there, is a, there is a component part which makes these guys... Makes guys make a lot of money. I made 100 million quid. People have made lots of money. Frank Warren's very successful. Anthony Joshua is a poster boy for British boxing. Mm. Whether you agree that he's the best that's ever been around is a different discussion. Yeah. There's a driving component part about him, which is the pride, the, the success, the achievement. The money comes, right? And sometimes it softens people. It takes away their edge, takes away their desire. Right? But he went into a ring in front of 96,000 people 
with a British heavyweight and got battered. And that's the legacy that Anthony Joshua mm -hmm. will have to look behind him in his rearview mirror and go, is that the lasting image? Because that will be the lasting image. And he can look at his bank balance and he can look at the reality of how wealthy he is. But surely the driving part that's put him in the ring in the first place, that brought him back from the brink where ultimately he had a meltdown after Usyk because he couldn't cope with the fact that he was beaten again and he had to rehabilitate himself, put him in the way of all the different slings and arrows and all the challenges of expectation. He's gone in there and disappointed himself beyond belief disappointed those around him, suspect, in terms of the 96,000 fans. I don't think he retires because I don't think he can live no, with himself. No, he, he, he will stay on, but he's got to look at it. And I think AJ said there, there's, there's more to come and there's better to come. And look, boxers, I think, and I say this with all due respect, because I think you have to be slightly delusional to even get in the ring because it's the craziest Agreed, sport in the world yeah. for me. I think Agreed, I look at it and think, yeah. I watch it ringside and think, these guys are crazy. So there's going to be a part of delusion where he thinks, I can get better. And I know AJ ticks, you said him training, he ticks every single box. Yeah. Preparation for this fight would have been absolutely through but the roof. But it's here roof. again. It's here again. Yeah. And I don't know if that can, I don't know if you can change that. I really don't. And ultimately, and I'm a good friend of AJ's, but ultimately he won 10 seconds of that fight. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, this wasn't a Hagler Hearns that has been portrayed no, as it wasn't. No, he by was Frank and Eddie. Well, it wasn't that at no. all. He won 10 seconds. And I, this, this, if he were to go straight for the rematch, like he has done, this isn't Andy Ruiz. No. Andy Ruiz, after the rematch, went parted and ballooned up yeah, another yeah, 30, yeah. 40 pounds. This, Daniel Dubois is going to be super on it as, again. He's going to be even more confident. He was walking to the ring confident before. I, he's, yeah. going to be, he's going to be skipping yeah. to the ring this Absolutely. time. I, I just don't see what the want is anymore. Do I, you know I, what? I, I, but he I, hasn't, I, got, I mean, he hasn't got a rematch. No. That's been established. No, but, yeah, no, but, if, right. no, but if they say to Dubois, rematch, he's taken it at a heartbeat and so is Frank. And he it's said the biggest that. fight you can And take. he said that, Dubois mm. said yeah. that. Oh, he said that. He said it on the radio this morning. He said earlier on today, I think bring him on and I'll do it even better next time. Did he say I think that? I think what I, I think what gets to AJ is the fact that what he's done for the sport of boxing, how he's transformed boxing, British boxing for sure, you know, and how he's inspired millions of kid, kids getting getting into the gyms, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That is a big thing it's on massive. his own, right? Outside of boxing, he's done that. Right, and I, he doesn't get the respect that he deserves. He definitely it's doesn't get the respect that he... Yeah, it, no, he's paying for his balance. But in, and all but the brands with him are right now, what's his driving when force right now? When you say that, he doesn't get the respect he doesn't. he deserves. From who? From the public. No, rubbish. no, from, it's, it's a loud... It's not rubbish. rubbish. It's a loud minority. Stop, everyone's jumping down his neck, everyone's giving him... Spence, it's a loud minority. Spence, everyone gets it. Come on, everyone gets it. Come on, mate. You do not in life get unlimited deference, right? What he's got is the recognition and reward. He's Anthony Joshua that everybody knows. His name is on everybody's lips. The expectations of him are so high because of the standards that he set. The major brands that have aligned with him recognise the fact that he is not just a boxer, but he transcends boxing. So you can't... And then you've just made a case for the fact that... Yeah, no, no, but... What you want, what you want is eternal deference. No, no, it's, what's that got reference. to do with it? No, no, not at all. People I get criticism, that, Spence. Listen, that, yeah, no, it. I know they do. But what I'm saying is, like, we... But he, he so doesn't he get the respect. respect. He doesn't get the respect that he deserves, From is what I'm saying. From the public. And you can't say that. Just look around. You've got listen 96... To, listen to the people. Spencer. Listen to the people. me backwards. You had 96,000 people in the arena. Have a look at the that he's taking right now Spencer. online. You had... It's Spencer. No, it's it's bollocks. It is, but who, who doesn't get it? It's Spencer. Bollocks. Does everyone get it? You did is not it, is, have... it, is it just all... Does everyone no, 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 no. Did you have... Nine... the mentality of the public, the British yeah. mentality. That did... is always the way it is. Build them up, knock them down. Spencer. That happens. Did you have 96,000 people in that auditorium wanting Anthony Joshua to lose? Did Fury get the same after losing to Music? Yeah. No, he didn't. And Fury got a backlash about his behaviour, his attitude, his outlook, his no. disposition. Okay, one second. And I hate to do this, because, again, I feel like I'm picking sides here. Fury lost to Usyk. Yeah. It's going to be a different backlash from losing to Usyk, mm. who we know is a generational, absolute, all-time great. Fury also lost to great. Ugarnu, by the way. Yeah, uh, that's a different debate. It's different Sorry. to losing to Dubois, where AJ walks in as a massive favourite. You're, yeah. you're going to get a bit of stick, Ben. I, you're I, gonna no, get I a totally bit understand that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that he shouldn't get stick, but what I'm saying is that he should also get the respect that he, he deserves. He should get the love. And he should get the love, and but, he will continue, and he will still not, try and... Again, you've got to be objective rather than subjective, because criticising Anthony Joshua, saying that he might be in a situation where PTSD kicks in, it's not criticism, it's an observation. It's not, not, it's not lack that. of respect, it's, it's an observation. Suggesting that Anthony Joshua is accountable for his performance is not criticism, the statements are fact. Ultimately, you look at it and say, here's a, here's, a, here's a young man that's achieved so much through boxing, has such demand, you've got not... This was a homecoming. Mm. I felt sorry for Daniel Dubois. Mm. He's the champion. Do you think AJ should retire? I... I don't know. I think that he's got to do whatever he wants to do, whatever he believes he should do, mm. not what other people should tell him. No, should but do. I'm asking you, though. Like, I'm asking you what you think. On like, both you... of you, before, before you answer, 
if he won on Saturday, if he won, how long do you think he was going to last in this sport anyway? But I, only, I honestly thought, even if he won, there's only a couple of fights left for AJ anyway. 100%. So he lost. And I'm just removing those two fights. Yeah. yeah. That's all it is. He yeah. lost yeah. and he lost badly. So I'm like, okay, forget those two more that you wanted, mm -hmm. Usyk and Fury. Call it. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. can't fighters just walk away like this? Yeah, because that's I, I what it's because exactly. that's what it fights. That, that's the boxing is steeped in that history. It is, that is a fact. And I want someone that to walk away with all the faculties. In I know place what you're saying. Agreed. And just be okay. I mean, no, I got I David Hay. I did, uh, you know, one of those. He wants fights. to come back. I saw. Yeah, 43 years of age thinks mm. he can come back. He says if my legs work, if my legs maybe he's drawing some attention to himself. Yeah. But I, I look at it and turn around and say, if Anthony Joshua thinks that the performance... I, I can't work out what happened. Do you think he should retire, or do you think I can't, there, there's I can't another avenue? It's, no, it's never the physical attributes, because it's never been that question. I can't work out what happened from Friday evening to walk into that dressing room. Something disconnects from walking out into that environment. Whether it's the pressure of expectation, yeah. something changed. Understood. Because really and truly, Anthony Joshua has all the equipment to be able to deal with Daniel Dubois. Yeah. And he didn't. And there's this disconnect between something that happened there, not something that happened here. Mm -hmm. And all of it channeled into an, an outcome. Do I think he should fight again? If he can live with the potential ramifications of a, an opportunity to be amongst the immortals, and I don't care what Carl Froch says about that, yeah. because if you win the heavyweight championship in the world three times, wherever you win it, you're a three-time heavyweight champion in the 100%. world. You go up there with Lennox Lewis, you go up there yeah. with Van der Holyfield, and you go up there with Muhammad Ali. Yeah, forget the, the end opponents of the and the... Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and so exactly. if he can live with not achieving that, if he can live with his last fight being demolished in front of 96,000 people by a British fighter, then he shouldn't fight again. If he can't... He can't. Then he has to fight again. Can yeah. he, Can he in a rematch, because that's what he always does. We know yeah. AJ always goes straight back in with his opponents, did it with yeah. Ruiz, did it with Rusik. Can he beat Daniel Dubois in a rematch? That's the question. But that is the million-dollar question. Can he? Well, you're going to say difficult. yes, Spencer. No, I'm going to do you, Simon. I'm going to sit on the fence on no, this I one don't and sit say... fence. Well, <laughs> it depends how... That's one thing he doesn't do, sit on the fence. <laughs> no, I don't sit on the fence. He does in certain <laughs> does, situations, does, mate. No. Trust me, trust me. OK. No, no, um, can he beat Daniel Dubois? I think that tactically... If he turns up... It, it, yeah, no, but it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's always going to be a difficult fight because at the stage of their careers where they're at, AJ will be now 35 you, now years Now you think it's going to be a difficult Daniel, fight. No, Last Daniel, you thought it was going to be a walk in the park. Yeah, no, but now, now, now the events have happened and you see that the manner that Daniel Dubois won that fight, you look at that and go, wow. All right, like, so, so by that logic... This is, so, so by yeah, that by logic, Carl Fox would never beaten George Groves and... What do you mean? And Chris uh, what do you you mean? would never beaten Liam Smith. What do you mean? Because you're basically saying what you've seen in the first fight determines the second fight. You normally see the second fight replicating the first well, it's fight. Be a, just give you two it's, examples where it doesn't. It's going to be very difficult for Anthony Joshua to, to reverse that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not saying he can't do it, but I say it's going to be very difficult. He's, although, he's although, so happy he got it out of you. Although, he's so happy he got it out of you. Although Froch won the first fight, I have to say. You should have picked me up on that. <laughs> the Chris Eubank was a better example. <laughs> but I, I do think that to Anthony Joshua... And, and again, I don't want to discredit Daniel Dubois because I think he's done brilliant. I'm, I'm very pleased with him. I mean, I remember mm. reading an article four years ago written by Jeff Powell telling everyone that this was the future. Not Joshua, not Fury, this guy. Then you had the Joe Joyce situation and on from that. Can I ask you just quickly, sorry... Where does what is the roadmap for Anthony Joshua? If he comes back, do you think he needs to go straight back into the immediate straight rematch? In. Straight in, yeah, straight in. Because there's no rebuilding straight process in. here, forget, right? Forget the rebuilding. Straight he hasn't in. got a rematch. But straight in. Yeah, I know he hasn't. Yeah. I know he has. I know he hasn't. I know. I spoke to Frank about that. There's no rematch. It's just a qualified space on the yeah. Riyadh season. Yeah. So there's a fight to be made there, but, and they'll, they'll take it. Yeah. They'll be. But, but if, they he, want, his, if they his, want it, they'll take it. Here's where we're at. Daniel Dubois not fighting until next year. Mm. Right, so that's him. So I spoke to Frank about this. Daniel Dubois will likely be out again next year. That that leaves there is Alexander space. Rusik versus Tyson Fury is obviously boxing for yeah. for the unified now with that Daniel Dubois the IBF champion. So that could leave Daniel in a position of fighting the winner of that. There is a and for the undisputed space, again. February, and then where does that yeah. leave? In February, there's a space which His Excellency hoped would have been filled with Terence Crawford versus Canelo, which isn't going to happen. Yeah. So there's a space for a super oh, fight in February. There you go. Yeah, but is, yeah, but that, that would that be too soon. Is that Fury, is Fury or Usyk? That's too soon. December 21st. No, that's, 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 that's too soon. No, I'm, thinking, I'm talking AJ Dubois soon, rematch yeah. February. Right. Well, do you, you see AJ with a, a Deontay Wilder type now? Is that a possibility? Could we see that sort of fight next? As, as, as soon I hope as. Not. I hope not. No, no, I, yeah, I'm with you on He's it not well. going to get any credit for that fight. No, I know he's not. Everyone I know he's not. I'm, I'm just Wilder saying, what, that's no why I was there. asking the roadmap. What do, you, where do you, what do you think he does? Straight into the immediate rematch. I, I think that is his path. That's, 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 that's his option. Where yeah. else is he going to go? Yeah, I'm yeah. with you. Yeah. I'm I've with people, you. I've heard people say Dillian White and Martin No, Poland, forget that. Forget which that. is a nightmare for him right now. He has to look for the rematch. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think... No, not where do you think. Do you think that what you saw from Daniel on Saturday evening would beat Usyk or Fury? I saw up 
<laughs> an improving fighter and he's improving at a rapid rate. And them guys are getting older and they're slowing down and Daniel's getting better and getting stronger. So to so answer your question, in another six months, in another 12 months, when that fight could possibly happen, he's got a great shot, man. Definitely. Great, great, 100, great 100, shot. 100%. Yeah, great shot. I mean, that, that, I'm talking about a real... That you're going to that as a you're, 50 You're aging them. You're aging they're them aging. past their best. Yeah. And way, they're on that slope that way. Yeah. He's going that way. And he's got the confidence of someone that, as you say, is 100% fighter yeah. of the year. So, yeah, he can beat both. Oh, uh, yeah. How things change so very quickly. The landscape of heavyweight change boxing. again, again, I suspect. Um, I just want to quickly have a quick review before we go of the undercard. And I want to start with Josh Bratzi, Willie Hutchison. Hmm. I'm now, what was the scoring? Crazy. I mean, how do the judges get away with 13, that? 113, 112. All, all I'm going to say is... Well, 117, 108 for one of the judges, which is a fair representation of the yeah. fact that he had two 10-8s and, and a headbutt. The judge should be penalised. He should never be Agreed. operating at that level again because you're talking about people's livelihoods, people's futures. Come on, man. Where's that judge coming from? Get rid of him. He's got to be gone. No, I want him to... be. No, that's too easy. I want him to watch the fight and be brought up to the board and score it. Mm. and explain how you come up to that decision. Life I, I want him yeah. to be Life put into yeah. the ring in front of the 98,000 yeah. and explain it in front <laughs> yeah. of everyone. But all that's one side. Yeah. Right? And put the controversy of the score yeah. to one side. Were you convinced by Josh? Did you think that was a convincing performance? Because I didn't. Well, I, I actually yeah. did. I actually, I thought there were times there when he bit down on his gum tree and he had to, Willie Hutchinson's a much better fight than people give him credit for, only because of the Lennox Clark loss. That was down at super middleweight. He was dead at the weight on that one. You go there, he was a massive underdog against Craig Richards. He schooled Craig Richards, and you looked at it, you go, this kid can fight. But I think Boatsy was dominant in the majority of that fight, but there were a couple of times when he had to answer questions and prove himself, and he sort of come through that. I think he's a great fighter, Joshua there's two ways. There's two I ways do. to answer that. There's, was it convincing to beat Willie Hutchinson, or was it convincing to be in a world title shot next against Bibble or Baturbi? Well, that's another level. And if it's the latter, yeah. then it's not enough yeah. for that. Yeah. Because he's now, he's now, he's now in a position to call. He is now in a position to call WBO after the fight with yeah. Baturbi yeah. and, and say, uh, Bibble, Give me one of those He will be two. calling yeah. WBO, yeah. won't he? Mm. Um, Hamza Shiraz, I mean, th that was a performance. Performance Tyler of the Denny, night. You know, was was very um, confident going into the ring, and dispatched very quickly whilst in it. I mean, this is a this. I mean, despite my little remonstrations about his actions with um, mm. Bradley Skeet, yeah, he is a world class fighter. Hamza Shiraz. I think Shiraz, he's the best he? middleweight in the world. Yeah, I, I agree. think so too. I, I totally there's, agree. There's Alam Kanali, there's Carlos Adamas, there's er there's Erislandi Lara. He beats them all. Yeah, I agree. All three of them were asked about this opportunity as well. I think he none of them, Subain, none of them well, wanted it. Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah, I was going to say, as well. I bet he's going nowhere near it. Yeah, he's, yeah, he was offered five million. Mm -hmm. No, he asked five million. million. He asked no. for five million. Yeah. Frank Warren said, no, thank you very much. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, but yeah, I, I, I think he's the best middleweight in the world right now. And I think he demonstrated that there. Like Tyler Denny's... That's a European Tyler, champion, by the way. Yeah, and, 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 and he's, done not, it, he's done it the old he's school way, He's best off a European champion. Yeah. In It could have been over in the first round. Tyler done well to get out brutal. How have you done that to a European champion in two rounds? That's what he does. That's right, what he does. He's a world-class performance. Does he stay, performance do you tonight. think he stays at 160 or goes up to 168? I think he stays there for the meantime. I think he right. captures a world title there and he definitely goes up. He, they, he, weighed, they weighed the same for about a minute. Yeah. Well, they weighed 159.9 pounds and Tyler stayed at yeah. 159 and the other guy went yeah, to 170. Yeah. Well, you could see that when they were in the ring. Two yeah. size differences. Yeah. Um, it would be remiss of us, before we go, not to, to pass observation on Josh Warrington. I mean, we saw the final curtain, I think, on Josh yeah. Warrington. I think that's been determined now, hasn't yes. it? Yes, yeah. Um, in his defeat to what is now a resurgent Anthony Kokachi. Yeah. I mean, Josh Warrington is one of those that you can't speak highly enough of. You can't give servant. enough... What a servant to the game. You see what he's done, you know, filling Ellen Road. You know, when, when he first started out, I thought, you know what, if this kid wins a British, he's done well. If he wins a European, he's exceeded what I, what I ever expected him to do. You know, going in there, beating Lee Silby, Selby as a massive underdog, and the way that he'd done that was unbelievable. Then he goes in against Cole Frampton, and he's like, definitely not going to win that fight. And the way, the manner that he, he beat Cole Frampton as well, you go, what a performance. Two-time world champion, mm. brilliant ambassador to boxing and, you know, and, and, you know, inspirational to many young kids coming through to say, listen, hard work pays off. This is what you can get. And that is what it is with Josh Warrington. He's a grafter and he's put it in there. And I think, I think there's still a big place within, within boxing for sure. It's a shame that as well, just because... He's rolled the dice in all of these last fights. I mean, the record books... But that's what I love say, about him. Yeah, the record books are going to say one win in six. Yep. But yeah. then you look at the defeats. Lee Wood, Lee champion. Wood, yeah. Kikachi, yeah. champion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Luis Alberto Lopez, champion. Yeah. Marissa Lara, champion. And Josh could still beat the fringe guys. Like, Josh could go down to European level and beat those guys. But he doesn't want to do that. He wants to fight it. the best. Yeah. And you don't normally see that. You don't normally see boxers put their gloves on the canvas. It's very much a mixed martial arts thing. Mm. 
So when he did it, I was like, oh, what's, what's he doing here? But it's a beautiful thing, man. One win in like six. That. Yeah. yeah, the damage and Kakache is huge. Yeah, mm. he's too big for him as yeah. well. So, what but what I like about Josh Warrington is that he recognizes that. Look, you like you say the names that he's lost to. To be fair, at an elite level, but he, he looks at it and goes, "I can only compete now. I can't win them." And for me now, like it's, a, it's an unbelievable career, man. It was, a, it was man. a big card, obviously, it, the biggest card we've seen in years. But would there be a disappointment that he's, he's leaving? The stadium was half full, not yeah. even half full, yeah. third, and he fights at six p.m. Yeah. Josh is Josh's headline for the last 10 years. Yeah, sure. And his headline... Josh is, by the way, Josh's fans are the best fans in British boxing yeah. in terms of noise. Mm. And it's a shame that it isn't a final swan song in... Yeah. Do you know what? Well, well, boxing, the history of boxing is like that. Man. It, it happens, That's why I man. want AJ to retire. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is why I'm screaming for AJ to yeah, quit. Yeah. Right, fellas. Thank you very much. That's it for episode 88 of Talk Boxing. Not even a whiff of a mention of the national anthem. Don't worry, I get that in my Daily Mail column. We'll see oh, you... Oh, just what? quickly, by the way. Frank Warren also wishes you a happy birthday and says, Does enjoy the acid drops, whatever that means. Oh, All right. <laughs> I wouldn't want to offend Frank. You know, <laughs> you know what these guys are like. Anyway, that's it for episode 88. We'll see you next week. Uh,